The House committee investigating the Capitol insurrection will reportedly begin a more public phase of the probe in 2022. The panel plans to hold a series of public hearings in the new year, according to The Washington Post. Lawmakers continue to gather information and seek testimony from witnesses to reveal what led to the attack on the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. Zach Hudak joins me now from Washington with more. Zach, thanks for joining me. What kind of data has the committee taken in so far and what can we expect to see in the new year? The committee has already done over 300 interviews with witnesses. They've already issued at least 50 subpoenas that we know about. And they have over 35,000 pages of documents that they're going through. So this is really a tremendous amount of information this committee is mulling over. And it's not just the members that we know are on it. It's a large staff uh, of uh, Capitol Hill staffers and lawyers who are mulling over all of this stuff. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We uh, do expect to see a lot more public information in the new year. As the uh, year was winding around, winding down before the holidays, we started to get some of the more significant pieces of evidence that we've seen, including text messages sent to former Chief of Staff Mark Meadows by uh, people who were actually sitting on the uh, House chamber floor as um, as rioters are breaking in. Um, and we know there's going to be a lot more public hearings. And we know that uh, Chairman Benny Thompson hopes by summertime to have at least an interim report. Uh, it's important to keep in mind here that Democrats are working on a uh, very much a uh, strict timeline because they're concerned that they will lose control of the House in uh, in 2022, and that Republicans will then disband this committee, and all of its work will go to nothing if they don't get it done by the end of the year. It's amazing to see how much they've uncovered so far, and how much more is still left to go in this investigation. Could we see the committee recommend the Justice Department investigate former President Trump for his role in the attack? It is certainly a possibility, and probably the way that would play out would be similarly to how we've seen. The committee recommend that uh, different people who they've issued subpoenas to who haven't complied be held in contempt of Congress. Uh, in essence, they vote to advance a contempt motion that then goes to the House as a whole that then votes on whether to send it to the Justice Department. In the case of the former president, I think there would be a number of issues that haven't come up uh, for people like Steve Bannon, who the Justice Department is pursuing for that very reason, uh, notably that he was president at the time that all of this happened. So it's a much more complicated situation, but it's certainly something that uh, very well may happen this year. In a recent interview with The Daily Beast, former Trump advisor Peter Navarro shed light on his role in efforts to suspend the certification of the 2020 election results. What more can you tell us about that? I thought that interview was particularly telling because it showed uh, that there was a lot more to this than just uh, the president on January 6th encouraging his supporters to go to the Capitol and then them going there and breaking in. Uh, what what uh, Peter Navarro really illustrates here is that there was a pretty elaborate uh, plan without any of that uh, to get members of Congress to delay things enough through their objections to uh, states where votes were, vote totals were close, delay things enough that Mike Pence might uh, decide that he actually <clears throat> had this ability to reject state's electors that it seems the former president thought he had. I know a number of constitutional and legal experts have weighed in saying he didn't. But the hope was these uh, members objecting would give enough delay for Pence to act in such a way. And then most of these states have Republican-controlled state legislatures. So the hope was that they would then send new electors who would vote for Trump. Um, but, but as I was saying, what this illustrates is that it really wasn't just about the violence and the mob we saw that day. Uh, part of what the committee is interested in investigating and what we're finding out about is the extent to which there is actually an attempt for so something of a peaceful coup uh, to not allow uh, power to transition over. Well, let's discuss the political atmosphere on Capitol Hill this year. In a recent interview with CNN, Michigan lawmakers Fred Upton and Debbie Dingell described it as toxic. What are their thoughts on the Capitol probe, and do you believe more lawmakers feel the same? You know, I started covering uh, the Capitol at the beginning of this year, so I don't have a great reference point, but I hear repeatedly that uh, from, from members and from reporters that it is much more hostile, hostile than it's ever been. 
I remember uh, just uh, a month or two ago watching Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene get into a screaming fight with Debbie Dingell uh, on the House steps. Uh, Democrats were standing out there celebrating having passed an abortion protection bill, and Green came out yelling at them. Um, and I think Dingell was telling her to remember her Christian teachings. So I think one element of this is the fact that uh, there are maybe more vocal and provocative figures on both ends of the aisle uh, in this particular Congress, and there typically are, and those folks tend to start these fights. But also, I think a big factor, uh, January 6th was a catalyst and I think a lot of Democrats feel that there were Republican members who were actually encouraging uh, the violence that day. And then there are Republican members who feel insulted that they've all been lumped together like that by Democrats. So it's really kind of high tensions and a lot of not seeing eye to eye on anything. Uh, I think the straw that broke the camel's back in a lot of ways there was everything that happened on the 6th. Let's see if they can at least work together to get some things done in the new year. Zach, thank you. Thank you.